now more than ever, we are conducting our lives online. Today, we're talking to an SWRI cybersecurity expert working to outsmart hackers. He has some simple tips to keep your smartphones and connected devices safe. That's next on this episode of Technology Today. We live with technology, science, engineering, and the results of innovative research every day. Now, let's understand it better. You're listening to the Technology Today podcast presented by Southwest Research Institute. Hello and welcome to Technology Today. I'm Lisa Benia. Work, school, shopping, and entertainment. During the global pandemic, we are turning to the internet more than ever to keep our lives on track. In fact, we're recording this episode through an online platform right now. Today, we're talking to a cybersecurity expert about guarding our online presence. Our guest today is SWRI manager and certified information system security professional, Victor Murray. Thank you for joining us, Vic. Hi, glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So Vic, let's start with the term cybersecurity. What does cybersecurity mean to you? Well, cybersecurity is a very broad term. And I, I think most most people think, uh, or when, when they think cybersecurity, they think what they see in the headlines, data exposure, websites down, uh, big, big, big name companies having problems due to somebody atta attacking them. Um, for me, uh, when I think cybersecurity, I, I tend to work more with uh, embedded systems. And so I, I think more about connectivity. You know, in the, in the early 2000s, um, we had all these uh, systems, all these embedded electronic devices, and they were they were safe. And internally, they had no mechanisms to provide security because they didn't need them. Somebody couldn't get access to them. They couldn't put their hands on them. These same systems today are now connected to the Internet. There's lots of devices. You go plug into these old circuits, and now instantly, boom, they're on the Internet. And... Uh, a lot of these devices are, are vulnerable to, to security attacks. And so how do, how do we protect those things? Um, and while, while we're balancing the, the accessibility, right? The, they're connecting them to make things easier, but we have to keep them safe at the same time. So security uh, has to be balanced with, with, with the devices working. So all, all the devices that you use, your, your, your cell phones, uh, your routers at your house, your, your networks at, at either at, at work or at, at home. Um, security systems, you know, if, if uh, a lot of people now have uh, cameras that they put on their houses. The smart doorbells, you're able to access from your phone and see, see what's outside. Um, all of these things, uh, security has to be uh, uh, front and center. Because if, if you can access it remotely, um, the only thing keeping somebody else accessing it remotely is, is, is keeping it cyber secure. Anything that you have that's connected to the internet, you should be thinking about security. Um, you know, your, your Alexas, your smart speakers, your smart TVs. Uh, I mean, so many things, your gaming systems. All of these things you want to you be secure. Make sure they're configured securely. Your home networks, you've got to use WPA2 on your, on your Wi-Fi. Don't use unsecured uh, 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 Wi-Fi. Anybody can access it then. So anything that's, that's providing connectivity, your, your vehicles. Um, a lot of vehicles come with remote start. People can smart start a car by their phone. Um, those those are all things that can be affected by by cybersecurity. WPA two. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah, that's that's the WPA stands for Wireless Protected Access, and two just means it's the second version. So two is the is the latest. It's more secure. D WPA by itself is actually still an option on a lot of routers, but it's not recommended uh, for for good security. So it's basically just to password protect your Wi-Fi. Uh, it cor correct, and it That's also what? encrypts it and makes it so that it, it's tougher for people to to get access to your Wi-Fi device and to see what what your you know the the network traffic that's going back and forth between your computer and your router. What are hackers after? Well, it depends on the hacker. Um, I typically break up hackers into into three categories. There's your, your uh, nighttime hacker who is really just playing around or doing things for quote unquote fun. Uh, sometimes the things that they do, you and I might not 
think uh, think of as as fun um but you know uh the the they they may be doing things that are devious or gross or uh 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 you know, we've seen the um, somebody playing like death metal music on a baby's security camera, which is, I mean, it's just creepy. Like, who would do that? That's really weird. Mm -hmm. But that's one class of, of hackers. Then there's the next class, which is a little more dangerous and a little more motivated. And they, they have something that they're trying to do. So they're either after money or they're involved in politics or they're supporting their country. Um, they're, they're doing something for a cause. Um, and, and they're a little more dangerous because they, they tend to be a little better funded. You know, if somebody's doing it for money and they've had any success, they, you know, they're, they're able to, to, to put more effort into those, those attacks and people that are doing it for politics or for, or for, uh, pride of their country or whatever. There's a lot of other things that fall under this category. Um, t t t tend to be more willing to put in extra time and 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 work, and the the third category of hackers is is nation state. So almost every developed uh, country has a a group that quote unquote hacks. Um, these guys are the best of the best. They're the best funded. Um, they are able to develop a very very uh, uh, intricate. Uh, hacks they're able to exploit zero days um some of your not as well developed countries like uh, uh north, north korea for example has a has a hacking unit um they tend at least in the headlines that i read they tend to be more focused on uh reuse of publicly available tools so there's uh things like metasploit which you can go out and download for free and you can set up and configure to do uh, you know, denial of service attacks or things like that, which is a, a really common kind of nuisance attack that j just makes people annoyed when they're trying to use a website or or trying to access their their company's uh, servers. So that's how that's each of those hackers are after are after very different things. So no matter what category they fall into, they're all up to no good. Is the bottom line. So <laughs> you do not want to become. It's what it sounds like is that is obviously uh is that true <laughs> first of all uh, well, I mean, just, uh, in, 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 no i mean so, so, some so there are a lot of good hackers you know are, are, a, a lot of I, I a lot of what i do is is hacking um where and i i we we, we are the the good guys so we try to hack devices to show companies look here's the vulnerabilities in your systems uh, you need to go fix these. That's that's a big part of our of our business. Um, a lot of hackers hack things just for. I mean, I mean the, the group and I I mentioned a kind of nefarious hack in the in the for fun. There are some people that hack things because they think it's cool and it really doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, you know, uh, modding your your vehicle aftermarket, jailbreaking your cell phone. You know, are those bad things? N no, uh, but but you're hacking your your devices. So there, there, there are people that do it to, to get access to, you know, functionality or features. There's a, there's a company that will uh, unlock features on or show you how to unlock features on your, on your Tesla. And, it, you know, is that good? No, because they're, they're stealing the, the, uh, the IP from Tesla by enabling that feature. But, you know, are they bad? I, they're, I wouldn't say that's good, but it, they're not necessarily just trying to hurt people or, or do do awful things. Does that make sense? So maybe so maybe there's a fourth category of harmless hackers or um, like you said, the good guys, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> good guy exactly. Hackers. Uh, yeah, we should probably, See, probably it's, just, <laughs> it's the term hacker. It's comes with some really negative connotations. So <laughs> sorry to group you in with the rest. We should, we want to say it again. There are some good guy hackers out there like you trying to get past these security threats. So who is most at risk for cybersecurity threats? Anyone who uses the computer, anyone who's online? Well, y yes, um, but, but there are, there are certain groups or, or, people that are at a lot more risk. Um, co companies in general are big targets. The bigger the company, the bigger the target. 
um, people that are well known, celebrities, uh, politicians are are regularly targeted. I mean, people in people who post a lot of information publicly, um, especially if you post about your work. Um, so if if you have something critical that other people would would want access to, um, and and you publish a lot of things online, you may become a target from from people. And interestingly, the more you publish online, the easier it is for somebody to hack you. Because if they know a lot about you, if they know enough to get your attention and 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 you know bypass your initial "Hey, I shouldn't click on this" uh, filter, um, pe people let their guard down and and tend to be much more trusting. So, so what is your advice to stay safe online? I think you've kind of touched on it with maybe we don't put as much information about ourselves. That would be a great place to start, but. Kind of walk us through your steps for online safety. For for, for sure, and I, I mean, if you're publishing online, I'm not saying that's bad. Um, um, but but in in general, for for staying safe, uh, there there's uh, and, and there, there's a large number of things to do. But but use passwords. I mean, if you if you have a portable device, make sure you're locking your device. Um, if you uh, are are logging onto a, a websites. Try not to reuse the same password for everything. Um, there are hacks that expose usernames and passwords for big name websites. And if you use the same password and username on all of your websites and somebody gets in you, you, your username and uh, password gets published, people are people will go and try them on other, you know, if, if some website gets hacked, they're going to go to Amazon and try the same username and password. And if, if you use the same password, they're going to be able to get access to your account. Now, there are a lot of times, it, depending on the company, there, there are sometimes uh, secondary catches to, you know, they'll, they'll send a text to your phone or something like that, which is a, a, a dual verification, two-factor authentication of, that, that you are you, which, which can stop some of those attacks. But some of them do not. Um, let's see, encry encrypt your, your portable devices. You don't want... If, if you lose your phone, you lose your iPad or, or, or smart tablet, um, you, you don't want somebody to be able to get, get it and access the data that's on there. Um, uh, phishing, phishing, phishing links. Be careful what you click on from text messages, from emails. Um, clicking on a bad link can give somebody else full access to your computer or smart device or your, your networks at work. Um, phishing emails, phishing texts, are one of the easiest ways to hack networks. They're the most common. Uh, the weakest link in security tends to be people. Um, and and finally, um, you use big name websites. you 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 all. If you know the name, and and people in general know the name, the security for those sites are going to be very good. Your your Facebook, your Twitter, your uh, uh, Amazon, Google. Um, <clears throat> all of these are going to have very good security. They're just, they're used by so many people, they have to put the resources in to keep them secure. Can you explain a little bit more about encryption? Uh, exactly what it means and how to do it? Sh sure. Um, I mean, encryption means that you don't store it as a, a readable text. So uh, it, you, you're, a lot of times your devices you you will we'll, you know if, if I unplug your hard drive from your computer and it's not encrypted, I can plug it in to my computer and I can get all the data off of it. I can read it. I can open your documents. I can open your your files. Encryption makes it so that it's all hidden, and without a password, I can't see what's on your disk. So same scenario. You encrypt your hard drive, and I'm a I'm a one of the bad hackers. I steal your hard drive. I plug it into my computer. Without your password, I can't see what's on the disk. So if you have a strong password and you're using a good encryption, for uh, mo most encryption will be uh, AES, uh, 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 Advanced Encryption S Standard, um, and there's 128, 256-bit. Uh, both both are, are very good. And if you have a strong password, um, I will not be able to break it. It, it, it's you know if I it, it, as long as you don't use something that's based on a dictionary or uh, that's uh, you know 
not one of the top 1,000 passwords, which there are databases online available that you can download those from. You can set up a script, send each of those 1,000 passwords, and it, it, it's very easy to do. So as long as you use a strong password, uh, your, your, your hard drive's encrypted, I can't access the data. So if I wanted to encrypt my laptop that I'm using right now, um, what do I need like a specific software to do that? Or is there um, something I download? The, but both options are, are, are available. Um, so like it depends on, on your on your setup. So uh, uh, Apple, I'm, I'm on, an, I'm on a, a, a MacBook Pro. And for mine, I go click a button and say turn on encryption. And it's that's it. And my, my uh, password to get into the system is used to decrypt it whenever I, I log in. Um, so you so see your 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 computer uh, devices, your smartphones, even if you have a, a an Android, it's very easy to go and uh, turn on security. So for uh, talking about cell phones, so Apple will actually default to your 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 iPhones will be encrypted. Your Android devices will not. It's the same button click to turn it on, but for some reason, uh, uh, unless they unless they've changed it, uh, Android devices default to to not being encrypted. Uh, so for some devices, it's already built in. It's just a matter of, as you mentioned, for the Android phones, just turning it on. Or for um, certain laptops, you just look for that application or you look for that um, button and you can just press that and you're good to go. Exactly. That's good to know. I didn't realize that that, that, that was available. Um, so let's go through those steps again. You said use different passwords for different, use different passwords for different sites. Don't fall back to the same password each time. Encryption, be careful what you click on and use the big name sites that have a lot of recognition because those are going to have better security. C correct. And I'm and so I'm not saying don't, don't I'm not saying don't don't use the smaller websites because every everybody has their own things that they go and use on. I I, I really just say that to, so that you're you can you can have a lot of comfort. You when, when you're going to the big name websites, security is not not an issue. Okay, that's great to know. And those are really simple ways that we can guard our online presence every day. Um, let's go to social media now because that seems to be more of a jungle when it comes to security. Any tips for staying safe on social media? Yeah, um, the, the first, which I, I hope everybody does, make your profile private. I, I, I just, I can't, there's very few people, I know, I know you know, celebrities, things like that have, I, even for them, you know, they, they should have a separate public profile that they know is public, they know what they're po posting is going to be visible to everybody. You do not want your profile public. You're, you know, and uh, if it's public, anybody can go out and see what you post. Um, and, and the second is just be, be cautious when with, with what you're posting, um, especially when it's as it relates to work. Um, you know, if, if you work on stuff that uh, other people, especially if you work in, uh, you know, defense or, or security related uh, areas, you know, you can become a target. And if somebody's able to go and access, even if, you know, you posted something two or three years ago, that's still online. And if somebody can go out and find that and they're, they, they, they want to target you, they can use all that information against you. The, the, the phishing email, which is the, or, 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 or phishing text, which is the most common way for somebody to get hacked, uh, can be very well crafted based on stuff that's online. So protect your data from the general public. I mean, I don't have any issue with, with sharing stuff with friends uh, uh, online. Just make sure it's just to your group of friends. I would say that also extends into accepting friend requests and accepting followers on these different social media platforms. Um, what do you, what's your advice on that? I mean, should we only be friending or accepting requests from people that we know? Oh, abs abs absolutely. If, or, or, and uh, uh, th this is pretty common as well. Uh, you get a duplicate friend request, or I, I, I've seen that several times. I don't, I don't accept them. Um, you know, so, so I'm sure your grandma or grandpa uh, uh, forgot their password and creates another account. But but <laughs> you have them tell yeah, you that. Don't verify, assume. Right? Yeah. Exactly, because what 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 people will do is just clone the account. They know they can see the username. 
they can see the publicly available picture. And if if they know uh, who any of your, and that, that stuff's available even if your account's private. But if you allow people to see some other stuff, like if they can see your friends, now they can go and friend, uh, send friend requests. They create this fake uh, uh, account and send friend requests to all of your friends. Um, you know, and now they're able to see anything that's on your on on their profiles. So during this time of frequent online classes, meetings, and conferences, so we're hearing about these uninvited guests gaining access and disturbing these sessions on various platforms. So one name that's popped up for them, Zoom bombers. Any tips to avoid this specific problem? Yes. Um, so these are this problem comes up most often for public meetings, if you have, or, or, or a conference, or something that um, a large number of people are coming to that, that, or it doesn't even have to be a large number of people, but somebody's trying to actively promote it and get a lot of people to come in. But there's a couple of simple things you can do. One, especially if you know who's coming, you, you can create a lobby, and, and everybody should be doing this. Um, in that lobby, you, you can decide whether or not to enter people in, to, or to allow people access to the meeting. And if you aren't expecting them to be there, then don't allow them in. Um, keep, keep people out that aren't, aren't supposed to be at the meeting. And you, you can, that can be true even for public meetings. Make sure people send an email ahead of time. You at least have the email address and a name. You can go in, check, and make sure, are they on the list? Yes, let them in. Not, don't let them in. Make sure that they register and you're able to, to do, at least at some level, verify uh, who, who, who they are. So I want to turn now to the work that you do at SWRI. Um, you are working on systems to outsmart hackers who may want to interfere with automated vehicles, which is really cool. Not that they want to interfere with them, but the work you're doing. So automated vehicles are not widespread yet. Much of the technology is in development right now, but you are already making them safer. Tell us about your work. Yeah, we, we actually are doing a number of things. We're, we're fortunate to work um, next door to, to a group that develops automated vehicles. Um, you know, they, they put their autonomy packages on a ton of systems. So we're, it, you know, one, one of the super cool things about working on cybersecurity at SWRI is we get to team with lots of other groups. And so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll coordinate with them. Uh, so we, we've done a number of projects with the, with the automated vehicle groups. So currently, um, we're supporting a, uh, a customer and helping them secure their, their entire automated vehicle uh, ecosystem. So this includes making recommendations, providing uh, best practice recommendations for software development. This is providing guidance on how to integrate their uh, embedded systems securely, how to monitor and trust the data coming from your, from your sensors uh, and the, the data that's being sent to your, your control actuators. Um, so a, a number of different things. We're also helping develop tools um, to help software developers test their code for cybersecurity vulnerabilities. So helping protect those things uh, that really don't have the ability to, to protect themselves otherwise. You know, they just, they read the traffic in and they trust what's there. But if you have a separate system that's able to, to uh, characterize, monitor, and flag when, when something suspicious is happening, uh, it helps make those systems safer. So there's one particular problem that you've identified, and that's GPS spoofing. It's a real concern. It is a security threat. So for our listeners, tell us what is GPS spoofing and what brought about your focus on this particular area of cybersecurity? So spoofing in general means, means you're, you're faking something. So GPS spoofing is where we send a fake GPS signal to, to a system. So, and, and if, if you spoof it well, uh, or if it doesn't have mechanisms to flag spoofing, um, the system can't tell the difference. And it looks like a real authentic signal. Um, GPS is one, uh, our, our, our group has actually spoofed all of the common uh, sensors used on automated vehicles. Um, one of the reasons that uh, we, we recommend uh, you don't rely on a single sensor. A single sensor is, is vulnerable, where if you take a group of sensors, several sensors, several different types of sensors, the combination of all of those is very difficult, if not impossible, 
to 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 spoof in in coordination. So um, that, that's that's one of the the recommendations we we have. One of the areas that we're we're looking to to spend some of our our time on, uh, and we have customers interested in that. Where are you right now with that technology? Is it um... Has it made a has it made a real world difference already? Is it still in development? So I would so our our our, our GPS spoofing capability. I, I I break our our capabilities up into uh, uh, a couple different categories. But one of, one of our primary things that we do is is penetration testing, where we we break systems. So our cap our capability of being able to spoof GPS is 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 an attacking capability. So we're we're, we're, we're going in and seeing if we can break systems and then we make recommendations on how to, to prevent it. So for, for example, for, for TRESS, for the electric grid, um, our, our recommendation there was to use a local clock to uh, check the timing that comes from GPS. So GPS has very, very accurate timing. That's how it calculates your, your position. Um, it's down in the nanosecond. But if you have a local clock, it may not be quite as accurate, but it's still pretty accurate. And if, if somebody spoofs the signal and starts drifting the, the timing, you can detect that with a local clock. Um, similarly, for uh, uh, localization on automated vehicles, there is more than one way to estimate your location. And if you track your GPS signal in coordination with your other localization estimates, and look for errors. And if you see an error that's larger than you would expect, you should flag it and your system should be able to, to adapt accordingly. Why would somebody want to spoof these signals in the first place? <laughs> well, to, 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 to you know, be, being the bad guy to, to break things. You know, uh, l let me throw out a, a scenario. Some, somebody somewhere doesn't like uh, the United States. Hard to imagine, right? Um, they, they, they have a little bit of funding, they have some resources, a little bit of capability. And let's say 10% of the, of the cars, several years in the future, 10% of the cars drive themselves, right? And they're heavily reliant on these sensors. And they put at a dozen of the busiest intersections in America, a device that can break or spoof uh, their, 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 their GPS signal. And they're able to instantly disable or cause wrecks at these dozen places. Can you imagine the, the, the mayhem that follows? You know, that 10% of cars that we're driving, nobody's going to want to drive their cars now, right? Um, not only that, think of the, the people that are injured or, or, or die in such an event. Um, it, it, it can just cause all kinds of chaos. So if you're able to manipulate something uh, remotely and over a decent sized area, uh, it, it can cause mayhem, which which gets the attention of people who want to do us harm. So what's fascinating about this is we are not uh, we're not largely in automated vehicles yet, but your group has identified this already identified this safety issue and is already doing something about it so that when we do get out in the roads, on the roads years from now in our automated vehicles, uh, this will have been thought about and worked through and it'll just be safer. So that's that's really awesome. Also wanted to mention to our listeners that you can learn more about SWRI's automated driving capabilities uh, by listening to episode five, The Automated Driver, and that came out in March, 2019. So if you wanna learn more about SWRI's automated driving, um, capabilities. That's the episode to listen to. So moving on to Black Hat. The, Black Hat is a high profile series of information security events held around the world. Thousands of people attend and you were a Black Hat presenter in 2019. Can you tell us about this event? What happens at Black Hat? Yeah, but B Black Hat is one of the largest cybersecurity conferences on the planet. Uh, it's held in tandem with DEF CON every year. Uh, in, in Las Vegas, uh, at least the, the uh, North American uh, uh, conference is. Um, very large. I, it was not this year. They held it, held it virtually. Um, and they have some amazing, amazing talks. Some of the best cybersecurity presentations uh, that are out there have been presented at, at Black Hat. 
um, very, very uh, uh, proud to have been able to present there. I'm very grateful to to Black Hat for for letting me present. And the the the, the cool the coolest thing about about presenting at Black Hat, um, you know, I'm 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 an engineer. I, I uh, I've been 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 an engineer since 2004. So 16 years as an engineer. Um, there's you know a little bit nerdy and 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 a little little bit dorky and uh, uh, so the first time I have gone somewhere, presented, and felt like an absolute rock star. So when I presented at Black Hat, there was two to 300 people there. It's a decent-sized uh, audience. Um, but after the presentation, uh, which went great, it, it was an amazing experience for me. Uh, you know, I, the, the guy comes up afterwards, and he's like, oh, you killed it. Great job. And then I'm swarmed. There's, there's a group of, of 15 people. I have friends in the audience that can't reach me because there's so many people around me question this question that question that. and it, it it was just an absolutely amazing experience so I, I i'm so so grateful to have, have been able to experience that you're in high demand that's for sure <laughs> so let's talk about the challenges of cybersecurity. what do you identify as the biggest challenges of cybersecurity? well i think the biggest challenge of cybersecurity is balancing it with with usability or the ability for devices to work so <clears throat> we, we, we get to work with a lot of different people at, uh, at SWRI that work in a lot of different areas because cybersecurity is needed across almost everything that we do. But it, it really runs counter to what the designing engineers or the designing uh, uh, developers are, are, are shooting for, right? You know, in the, in the example of, of automated vehicles, which we, we've talked about, um, cybersecurity slows down the, the, the processing. It's an extra load on top of what the system is already doing. It, it fights the, the uh, technology advances for, for automated vehicles. And so it, it's a real challenge. There has to be balance. You know, I, I, I joke all the time that I can make a really secure rock. You know, and nobody can hack it. Um, but, but, but what does that do? It's, it's, it's of no use to anybody, right? You, the devices that people want to use, the devices that people need, have the ability to do things. And so the, the, the challenge is supporting the doing of those things while keeping it safe. And from biggest challenges to your biggest breakthrough in this line of work, can you um, tell us about that? I can. The coolest thing that I've seen, so we, we will get uh, a number of devices or, or things like that and we'll, we'll hack them. Right? And, and sometimes we'll get those devices and then we'll get them again a year later. And then we'll get them a year, again a year later. And every once in a while, they fix what we told them to fix. And then we break something else. A year later, they fix it. So we, the, the coolest thing is being able to impact change on, on the devices. And these, these are very popular devices that, that uh, you and I use all the time. And so we're, we're able to point out security vulnerabilities and get them fixed. Super, super cool. We say this podcast is a way to listen and learn. To close today, what do you hope our audience learns today? What should be the biggest takeaway about cybersecurity? Oh, uh, I mean, the biggest takeaway to me is, is, is use caution, but don't don't wrap your wrap your life around this stuff. I mean, you know, I mentioned the the balance between usability and cybersecurity. Um, um, I, I don't I don't want people to take my 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 scary stories as reasons to not use your your smart devices. Just be be smart. You know, when when if if you're going online, if you're using smart devices, um, um, follow good guidelines. You know, you you use your in, encrypt the devices, use your passwords. Don't click on the, the most common way for people to get hacked is clicking on bad links. So be very careful what you click on. All right. The advice doesn't get any better than that from our SWRI cybersecurity expert. A lot of useful information. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise with us, Vic. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of Technology Today. Subscribe to the Technology Today podcast to hear in-depth conversations with people like Victor Murray, changing our world and beyond through science, engineering, research, and technology. Connect with Southwest Research Institute on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. 
Check out the Technology Today magazine at technologytoday.swri.org. And now is a great time to become an SWRI problem solver. Visit our career page at swri.jobs. Ian McKinney and Brian Ortiz are the podcast audio engineers and editors. I am producer and host, Lisa Pena. Thanks for listening.